name is Sara Boyström, and this is a whiteboard seminar about protected areas in cities. Today we know that our cities are full of life, not just people, but also nature, and the nature providing us with ecosystem services. But when we think about cities, we usually think about the houses, the roads, and lots of people. But in between the houses and the roads and the people, there is more nature than we usually think of. This nature is very important for the citizens locally, providing us with lots of ecosystem services. And they are also an important part of the global biodiversity. What is happening now in most of our cities is a rapid urbanization. This usually means that the urban nature has to give room to more buildings and more roads and so on and so forth. As a response to this threat to the urban nature, we also, in a very rapid pace, create new protected areas in our cities. This means that we add a new interest into the debate of what to do with the urban land in the urban landscape. Looking from above, you have the city here and you have some spots that we have not yet decided what to do with. The question is to build or not to build, or if you like to put it, to conserve the nature or not to conserve nature. And of course, all these spots create a lot of debate within the urban planning. What do we want to do with this? Do we want to have the natural values there? Or do we want to have it for housing, for infrastructure and so on? When a protected, areas, a protected area is created, it's of course a result of compromises. And this means that the border here is a compromise. And it's very artificial not following the social boundaries or the ecological boundaries. The landscape that comes out from this process consists of the built-up areas and then we have the border, symbolized by a fence here. And then we have nature in the protected areas. What this is saying about the landscape is that we can actually put ecology and nature here, and we can put the built up areas here, and then everything is fine. We have the biodiversity, and we have our urban activities going on here. It's also a very strong border for management and activities, uh, finances planning and so on. It says that here it's okay to build whatever you like and here it's not. But the thing is that ecology works this way that there are lots of interactions across this border. For example, you can have a species that use this tree and another tree on the other side of the border. You can have water flowing across the border. You have people walking into the area, also connecting the protected area to the built-up area in a very uh, social way. The urban environment here have a large impact on the ecology here. And on the other hand, this part, nature here, provides the built-up area with lots of ecosystem services. So there are interactions here that are not taken care of. Another result of the negotiation in the urban landscape is that you come up with very small areas. And given this process, of course, these areas are also highly isolated, where you just have nature here. This is a risk. You risk the nature, you risk the protected areas and what we want to put in there. 
Um, so what is needed? What do we need to do to safeguard the local ecosystem services, the biodiversity in our cities and also in the end for the urban sustainable development? We need to focus on the border zone. We need to look into the betweenness and create more semi-urban nature areas. Schoolyards, public gardens, churchyards maybe, and areas with visitor centers and so on and so forth. We need to focus on the in-between, not on the core areas in the urban and in the protected areas. So, to summarize, we put a lot of money into the protected areas in our cities. We put a lot of ecological trust in these symbols for urban biodiversity. But to succeed in this, we need to realize their urban setting to not undermine their ecology. Thank you.